if we think about hip hop, we say it's American music, or samba, we say it's Brazilian music, reggae, we say it's uh, Jamaican music, you know. But those music didn't exist until Africans arrived in those countries and continents. And this is why I always say that I cannot say it's Jamaican music. It is African music made in Jamaica. My name is Likente Mshala and I'm a Roots Reggae selector. Black people in Jamaica didn't have support from media, television and radio. So they started to produce their own music, but they needed to spread it within their community. And the only way to do this was for them to actually build sound system in their backyards. With the reggae sound, you cannot buy it off shelf. So we bought the material and we built it backyard at the house. This one is a five-way sound system. It's like literally taking the music out of the studio and playing it how it sounds on studio. It took about six months to build it. We have to buy the wood, you have to import the driver from Europe and the preamp too, you have to wait for like a year because they also build it at home. So it's customized to sound like me. This is why our sounds have names too. You can find another sound looking similar like this, but they won't sound the same. My sound is called Kebra Ethiopia. We are one of the few sounds that participate in a global scene. We've played in more than 22 countries. It doesn't have borders. It really connects with everyone all over the world. It's really international. I play my music in parks and the reason behind that is a historical. Black people in Jamaica and also here in South Africa were not allowed to congregate in groups. So we would host our own parties inside the house, not even outside. Now times are changing, we can congregate and because the sound is big too, you can't play it in a small place. We need to take it out there for the community to hear it. You know? And our music can accommodate all people because it's clean music. So parks do accommodate the kind of environment we want. Reggae music is African music, so you need to feel the drums playing. And how the music is produced, it's like the heartbeat, like how your heart sounds. When people go and stand in front of speakers, it doesn't hurt them, but it gives them that kind of comfort, like remind them of who they come from, their roots. I feel like you achieve something when you see that, because that's where I want to take them, you know, to remind them that we are African. With reggae music, it teaches you about your culture, your history. People like Steve Peake or people like Marcos Garvey, Mandela. When you listen to those names and when you research about that history, that's where you see the black excellence. It's kind of like a continuous reminder that we are also people who can participate on the same level as other nations. Four years ago, I was in France, I remember someone asking me that it's, it's very surprising that there's a sound system in South Africa. <laughs> and actually me, I was surprised that there's a big reggae scene in Europe because this music, you know, talks of Africa, blackness and all of that. And to me, it was surprising me that they think we don't have that. Meanwhile, they could identify themselves through reggae music. I think we need, as Africans, to retell our stories because a lot of people, they don't really know our story, you know, and I would encourage anyone who's an artist to write their own story and tell their own narrative, you know.